Good morning, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. With artificial intelligence becoming a changing face of modern day soldiering and battle management, it is an enigma which needs to be unfolded. To unravel this mystery, we have with us retired Major General Lav Bikram Chand from the Corps of Signals of the Army, who has been the part of this change. He will enlighten ADU viewers on the development of quantum and artificial intelligence technologies in Indian Army. Welcome, sir. We are really honored to Thank have you. you on the show. And now I request editor Sangeeta Saxena ADU to take the discussion forward. Welcome, sir. General Chand, it's wonderful to have you in the ADU's chat room. And, uh, you know, like Chetali said, it's a mystery. It's an enigma. It needs to be unraveled. And who better than you, sir? You're just the man. You've been a part of the process. So welcome to our chat show, sir. Thank you so much. And so uh, we'll begin... Actually... Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I said it's an honor to be here. And uh, of course, a mystery will not remain a mystery any longer. Right, sir. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, as you know, why it suddenly become... It has been important. But suddenly becomes important because uh, what happened was in the chief in his press conference on 12th also spoke about, uh, you know, quantum technology and artificial intelligence and the center which has been set up in MCT Mao. And we, uh, you know, there was a video which was going viral on the YouTube where you have the Chinese having their soldiers, robotic soldiers, huh? and uh, in the Ladakh region. Uh, and uh, in our Ladakh region. Huh? And uh, then, you know, they were trying to show that, see, these are the people who are there. We don't need men. We don't need to acclimatize anybody. And see, our, we have our robotic soldiers who are all 100, 100%, 365 days acclimatized. So, you know, sir, it's, uh, it's really a mystery we'd like to unravel. So, sir, we'd like to ask you, what now? Okay. Uh, so, uh... You know, uh, Sangeeta, before I start, uh, let me just make a statement. In fact, two statements which I get out of what you had uh, introduced the subject to. It is a misnomer that the artificial intelligence is something of the current, even in the Indian Army. And I'll, I'll, I'll elucidate this later. Um, uh, it is, has been there always in some different form. Secondly, about the Chinese, uh, as in the due course of my talk, I'll break that myth and bring out certain challenges. There is, it's more of, at the very outset, let me just say, it is more of a propaganda uh, to, you know, uh, try and uh, uh, change the perception and, and uh, how hard they may try to, uh, you know, Lower the morale of our troops, foot shop, boots on ground, they will not be able to do it. So that loss be clear. So let me begin with, uh, you know, just giving a very, uh, for somebody who's not very well acquainted with artificial intelligence, what actually it means, uh, in just maybe a very briefly. So actually, when you look at the real world, and, and I'm not talking as, let's keep artificial intelligence out, right? The artificial part. Intelligence has always been part and parcel of every living being's life. So if I home on to a human being, uh, leave aside animals, every day with your senses, sensors, your six senses included, uh, which I compare with quantum uh, mechanics. So if you look at the five senses uh, it, and you're getting data, storing it in your memory, analyzing it, some of it is short memory, some of it is uh, long-term memory, and then you decide on that data and some action takes place. So there's a decision. So what you have, you have a real world, you've got some inputs which are the sensors picking up some inputs which become your mental uh, brain, uh, data stored in your memory uh, brain, and then a decision taken. A very small example is so instantaneous that if there's an object like a fly approaching your eye, uh, your brain has got tuned to give a signal to the eyelids that shut your eyes without any action. I mean, it's, it's just in 
split seconds. So that I relate to something which is actually uh, a learning which has already taken place, right? So with this three blocks which are there, you got a real world, you got some data, and you got a decision to be made. Now let me bring in the issue of artificial and into this domain. So what actually happens is in artificial, you have the real world, you have sensors, multiple sensors, they could be your radars, they could be your heat sensors, temperature sensors, seismic sensors, uh, videos, data, raw data, whatever, any, any form. It could be a textual data, it could be a picture. All this is being picked up and put as a data. So then you act on this data. You know, the human brain is something which is actually sifted the data which is, is collected, right? Like I gave the example of a fly approaching. So it, you carry out certain uh, analysis on this data, which is nothing but your data engineering, data science, data analytics, and those forms. And then, so you have a data which is available, uh, not in the raw form, a data which in which uh, all the, uh, uh, you know, some data which is outliers. Outliers means it is actually not an abnormal. You know, maybe a sensor is malfunctioned that time. All these sensors are mechanical or electrical or optical devices. So with that, when you're leaving it out, you carry out a lot of statistical functions. You have a data which we has been put in some form. And then on this, you do a little bit of computing, uh, which we actually call uh, machine uh, learning, uh, which is the fourth, which is a, a, a something which I'm putting in between because in the human angle, I just said something which is learned, right? So now I've just provided data. On this data, you carry out certain, you know, um, uh, algorithms like it could be uh, deep learning, uh, computer vision, or, uh, or uh, you know, uh, language processing or sentiment analysis and something which you actually what you want to do so then with this you have a model which you call a mathematical model why i'm saying math i'll introduce it as mathematical first primarily because mathematical computer understands only zero and one it's a mathematical it doesn't understand an object it doesn't understand that so it converts everything back into a mathematical model which now i'll call it a since it is learned a machine has learned so i'll call it a machine learning model or machine learning once it is done and based on this it will make a prediction and give you a decision so when you compare these two this is exactly there now in this domain if you see anybody who has been uh, uh, learning on uh, computers especially when you're doing the you know the, the data analysis or uh, databases and all that People used to say the, uh, the role of a data entry is important because it is garbage in, garbage out. So everything which is the, the success of a AI model or ML model is dependent solely on how well has the data been worked upon. So that is something they call as the EDA, which is evolutionary data analysis. And that is where the role of data scientists, data analysts, labeling. And labeling is something, you know, there's something which is definitely known. You say, okay, fine. This is a picture. It is of a, a Fiat car, this color, side view, and you label it. When you label it, it gets told that, look, the, the accuracy of this data, the probability of the data, the certainty of this data is 100%. Right, so that is what a labeling does. So that will assist in the uh, when you are acting on the uh, when you are uh, doing the machine. Uh, I mean, you are making the machine learn. You know, you are you are, you are carrying out trials on the on, on the test uh, on the trial data, and then arriving at a model. Right. So this is how in wholesome which AI is there. Uh, okay, I think with that background, now let me just tell you. I just I'll just underline the importance of data which is important. So a takeaway from this is that any AI model or project has to be continuously 
revisited. It's an iterative process on EDA as well as in refining the mathematical model. So it is not that a model has come up and then you like it's a program and it will work. No, there has to be a number of revisits which is there, right? So this is why there has to be a total ecosystem in AI which has to be in place, an original place. It is something like if you if you look at Bill Gates, they said, look, Bill Gates, uh, Microsoft comes out with a product and then batches he follow. Every Tuesday there's an update and all that. So this is something which is, there's a bad team which is, uh, working on this, it's, it's it's a continuous work in progress. It can't be a static model which is there and you say, okay, fine, this is there. It has to have iterative uh, improvements. Now with this, um, I made a statement that uh, the, the AI is not new. Okay. Uh, we've all heard of the famous TAC-C3I systems, tactical information, uh, TAC-C3I system of which uh, CIDSS, which is the uh, Command Intelligence Decision Support System, is a part. So when you look at it, what does it do? It has got sensors from various uh, subsystems, whether it is electronic warfare, whether it is uh, your surveillance systems, whether it is uh, human in boots on ground, something is picking up. All that is coming up is getting analyzed in a data stored, and then there's some uh, process takes place and it gives you a, a decision support. The only thing now here is that with the, and this was something which was conceived in the early, uh, early, uh, or, or, or the uh, mid 80s and uh, fructified also the phase one was there. But somehow what happened was that the change in technology, firstly the miniaturization of uh, the edge computing there, the increase in computing power, the introduction of AI growth explosion, which has taken place in the past um, uh, a decade there, and certainly so much more in the past uh, four or five years, that all this became, uh, you know, uh, CIDSS, uh, which was meant to display, whatever was there, it would display on the maps. It, it had a very good uh, display systems on, on digital maps and all like that. The loss is relevant. There was something but that better which came up, right? So, and similarly, the NCW has already already in place. So, what all is there now? If I if I look at it, the AI angle which is there, and also uh, the uh, remarks which have been made that uh, the, one of the vision of uh, Indian uh, armed forces is to be capable uh, to fight a modern digital in a in a modern digital domain, right? So it adds up a lot of cyber domain and all that, which is already existing. So with this, the AI is something which is a tool which has been incorporated to make it ease of uh, function, right? So that is why uh, it, it has been there. So in my opinion, if I take a takeaway from this, uh, since I was also involved in uh, in uh, tax C3I, CIDS as being part as a, as a kernel uh, way back in uh, 2002, 2003, as part of the CDNS director, and I, I used to interact a lot with the DRDO team, uh, Mr. Malingam, who's the project director, and uh, and others. They did a phenomenal job. Uh, it, it is there. So whatever learnings we have got from them should be preserved. That's a lesson learned. That is a stepping stone into the AI domain. Uh, we should not be reinventing that. It should be uh, that concepts bring in miniaturization and AI into it. Uh, we have a, a good uh, model which is already going to be there. And that is what I feel out of my experience in this. Uh, there. And um, uh, so I don't, and then when you look at the data analysis, like uh, CICP was a project that started again in the uh, 80s, uh, the uh, the MISO project, the uh, Army Headquarters Computer Centers, which is there uh, earlier with, with mainframes, which was there. So they have all been there. In terms of infrastructure, the army data networks of which ESCON is a part, your NFS coming up, your data centers which have come up, these are all, uh, and, the, and the army cloud which has been set up, these are all part of the underlying infrastructure which, uh, which actually um, give an impetus to uh, the AI. After all, AI will, what is it? A AI has come into being primarily because of massive, massive storage capacity. That is the data that can be available, made available to you for analytics is, is, is phenomenal, uh, unlimited. 
uh, the processing power is phenomenal. Even today, even your um, smartphones, which you are uh, carrying, all of them are uh, have got processors which are AI capable and they can be enabled, right? So all you now need to do here is that take a step for this the infrastructure is required. Army is well, uh, or the armed forces, because NFS, the FNET, or the uh, new one of um, Navy, they're all in place. So the, the basic infrastructure fabric to connect the edge onto the cloud is already there. It is just the, uh, the dynamics of putting modern um, cloud computing technologies, BI techniques, and things like that in place. So that is what I look at it uh, when you're looking back. So this is how uh, I sir, think, I'll, uh, you know, for a minute, I will just, yeah. uh, you know, button to just ask you one thing. We generally, every time our audience feel that that is the thing they want to know. You know, is since we are on a run up to the Indian Army Day being celebrated tomorrow, we just like to understand from you that is there a roadmap which is there with the Indian Army for utilization of army intelligence uh, for uh, the artificial intelligence for army for things like gathering intelligence for things like actual battle space management for things like you know actually soldiering on the fronts like some of the other advanced countries like israel uh, you know us uh, china are doing so is there a roadmap like this you know, because what we are talking about at the moment is data analytics and, and you know, there's data mining. There's a lot of things which we talk about. For the common man, it does not make sense. For them, they say, okay, a soldier, a human can be replaced by a humanoid. A, so, a soldier can, you know, also be, uh, in, during the fighting tactics, can have everything ready in front of him and be told that without having his senior next to him to give him orders. Now, something like that. So is that something which is there? Is there a roadmap for something like this? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, my experience has been that for everything, uh, a, a project of this mega nature, there's a detailed study carried out and a roadmap and the way forward is worked out, right? This has been there in all the major projects. It, it need not be just a, a project which is IT-based or AI. When I say IT or cyber-based, it is for everything. The capability development, uh, there are structures, organizations place were actually doing it uh, there. So it, but uh, about the roadmap, I'll just, you know, uh, when you come to it before my roadmap is um, the army, when I just come to before roadmap, let me just say that, you know, uh, there is a prospective planning of what is the force structure, what is the requirement, everything is worked out. You know, so uh, the objectives are very clearly worked out. So objective in Indian Army, there's undeniably that, I like I said, to fight uh, a winning battle in the modern digital battlefield. That is there. It's been stated by the CDS, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the late CDS, the, uh, the, all the chiefs. It's been an objective. The Indian Navy has already been saying that, look, I'm NCW capable and uh, capabilities are there. Uh, then the, the, now it comes up is in this changing in technology, uh, how, at to what level, to what degree of AI do you want to bring into this, right? That's also important. So it is not that AI is a thing which is going to come. Uh, I still remember when I was um, in fact with my professors uh, during my PG in AI, uh, I asked them a question about, you know, how, what is the progress? Being a military man, a veteran, I wanted to know uh, AI, how they think about AI in uh, in the academia uh, domain. Uh, they said, look, uh, there's a lot of ethical questions, and he left it that. I didn't uh, pursue more. We had an informal interaction. Uh, that's it, right? So AI is there. AI in armed forces, can it be totally artificial intelligence devoid of a human being? A big question mark. Is it going to be rule-based AI? Yes. Is it going to be, uh, you know, uh, the uh, remotely piloted platforms, uh, whether they are uh, aerial, subservice, surface, ground, robotics, whatever there? Uh, yes. When I say robotics, again, is it going to be fully robotic, the like humanoid? A big question mark. Now I'll tell you why. Uh, I'll give a very small example. When I said that, look, let's take a 
case of a uh, autonomous car which is uh, now uh, uh, coming up so i was attending one seminar and uh, one of the uh, audience member asked that look what will be the success rate of a autonomous fully autonomous car in indian roads right so he asked a very uh, simple question uh, being a uh, a very witty question because he was what i took away from that is if i am going to look at an indian roads wherein a dog a cow a cattle there's so many things which can uncertain these unpredictable some new scenarios coming up on the road right uh, is uh, something which you will not experience in a in a in a road which is totally express way where nothing else can other than vehicles can come up here you will have a bullet car you will have different dimensions of cars and all that so in this domain of uncertainties uh, even a autonomous car will have to do a lot of work to fly on indian road unless you enforce very strict rules right so ai in rule based when you have a totally uh, unmanned uh, uh, trains metros which is coming it's easy because it's a trap nothing nothing much is going to happen the uncertainties uh, unpredictabilities are less the degree of unpredictability or probability is very much in a battlefield right so in battlefield humanoids and all is is just a uh, a matter of demonstration uh, just to do a technology demonstration and try to there because today if you realize the uh, post west um, everybody is now fighting for uh, technology dominance then look my technology is better because the moment you prove that you are good uh, a good uh, technology provider your um, uh, subscriber base for your 5g goes up uh, by uh, multi fold so these are all the demonstrators which are tricks of they are doing it right now coming to the road map so this is what i wanted to uh, put it right so you know it's everybody a uh, lot of thick thing which is being said and seen has to be looked at from this light look road map whenever it is made and which all the armed forces indian armed forces makes it very there i mean i've been part of a, uh, this uh, dit cc also uh, that the uh, the defense uh, ict road map which was uh, which is always being chaired uh, under the headquarter ids uh, the cisc used to be there but it would always be chaired by raksha raj uh, mantri he would chair it there we found that it is not something which is there it is a very deliberate effort they make it at, at that high level so firstly you need to identify realistic needs needs cannot be fiction unrealistic because then you are actually diverting from your making a very complex road map unachievable and then then there are delays and then there's a time overrun technology overrun and all that the other is uh, parallel with this is the skill development it is more so important especially in these new fields of ai bi uh, the artificial intelligence i know that uh, data science uh, and analytics and uh, quantum computing which again is uh, a very nascent stage uh, you need to develop skills right so this is the second road map which is then with any change there has to be an organizational change in organizational change it is not only change in the organization of the user there has to be a change in the organization of the r&d because ai like i explained is a life cycle so there has to be a change in the organization of the r&d the close interaction between the ar and the uh, uh, the development agency design development agency production agency and the user you they can't be in three separate compartment they have to be together since the very beginning and then of course uh, in these domains um, there has to be a major requirement of private public and academia partnership and then uh, the you know there, there has to be a educational uh, organizations also need to undergo a change today um, the erstwhile military training which was focused primarily on the military equipment or the equipment which military is using uh, i'm not talking about the mct cme and mcem they have to actually be the academia r&d uh, base to uh, to to introduce and to deploy Uh, state of the art technology so these 
uh, are the roadmaps which is there, and these roadmaps actually are taking place. Uh, why I'm saying that is because um, if you if you remember, uh, Chief made a mention that MCT has become a center of excellence for AI and uh, and and uh, quantum uh, computing and there. Uh, it, and it is it is correct because you know I still remember when I was uh, doing my uh, I mean a, a stint there, uh, a short stint. Uh, um, when I did my uh, BTEC, I mean, there were from uh, from MCT, uh, there were the computers were all those uh, floppy driven and uh, you know even 80s and all that uh, were there. These uh, laptops and all were the power was not there. Even then, uh, the focus was on uh, on on microprocessors, machine language, and uh, automation, which is there, uh, and and robotics. There it was also there. Now, uh, MCT already has a uh, you know a AI lab. It has already had demonstrated the SOMs uh, on, on ground SOMs uh, and you know uh, robotics, uh, remote uh, weapons and all that. They had uh, demonstrated that. Right? So the roadmaps are in place, uh, but there are certain uh, work to be done. So AI roadmap, I'm sure, uh, because uh, would be uh, in place now because. Uh, uh, I, I believe the uh, DGIS would be certainly looking into this. So that, yes, the roadmaps are in place. Oh, so that was very nice. And one thing before winding up, I'd really like to ask you is, uh, where does quantum technology, quantum mechanics, where does it stand in the Indian Army's, uh, you know, plan for uh, complete digitization? Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, that's a very uh, good question. And let me uh, just answer that. You know, I made a statement wherein I had said that uh, the computing power is what, uh, what has enabled AI. Now, what is quantum computing? Actually, it, it is something which derived out of uh, quantum mechanics. And it is still a lot of work in progress. So I'll just say how, very briefly, how it quantum uh, uh, is there. So actually, if you see, uh, traditionally, the uh, bits were uh, zeros and ones. The moment you brought in a concept of quantum bit, a concept came up of something which, again, it could be a zero or one, but a bit could be either a zero or a one, both. But the probability domain or the fuzziness was which was added to it. So it became something uh, true bit. And with this analogy, there are certain challenges, yes, of course, which is there. So it came up that a one bit which could represent uh, two, uh, two here. Here, one bit can rep represent uh, two or more levels, right? So as a result, when you look at a qubit, which is about 10, so it, the kind of data that it can compute or, or, or store, uh, would be two raised to the power of two raised to the power of ten. So that's a huge uh, data. So this is a new domain which came up. So the qubit is difficult to actually store, and quantum encryption is something which is being demonstrated, certainly, and it's not very far when uh, that will come up. Uh, so as a result, the uh, even uh, DRD has demonstrated it. So a big issue of key distribution or key management over the air is going to be soon uh, resolved by uh, using this quantum encryption. When it comes to uh, quantum uh, computing, actually, it is still a lot of work which is, needs to be done. But the advantage of this would be that it will add phenomenal degree of uh, power to a computing power by phenomenal degrees. Uh, it will be an exponential increase. So as a result, the power of the AI, especially uh, uh, in the machine learning and uh, th that stage will become so phenomenal that will add actually to the AI. So quantum physics will bring AI to a certainly a different uh, plane. Uh, but here, when you're looking at uh, quantum uh, domain, there are basically three types. Um, one is which is uh, erinial, which means it is you're just optimizing a process, something which is generic, 
uh, which is again uh, a little, um, uh, which is analog actually, which is again becomes a little generic in nature. And the third is actually universal quantum. Now these are the quantum three types of quantum computing. The other, there's some progress which has been made in in the optimization of computing power, uh, especially by uh, IBM, uh, Microsoft, um, Google, and they're all working on it. We're still work in progress. Uh, today, commercialization of this is going to take place. Yes, uh, the encryption portion, which is going to come up in the in the universal in, uh, quantum uh, computing is taking place. So as of now, but there's a lot of work in progress. Will this be available to uh, the armed forces or even for commercial use uh, in the near future uh, is a big question mark. Um, it is still at trial testing uh, stages, development stages, refinement stages. Uh, I don't think uh, it will reach even the beta level. So uh, though it is uh, talked about, uh, it is uh, it's still quite a distance. However, the Indian Armed Forces and especially Ministry of Defense has always had a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's the policy to always be in touch or to introduce uh, state-of-the-art future technology. Uh, one classic example is I still remember uh, they had LRD, they had already started this work on 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 uh, on uh, on uh, directional uh, uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, he spectrum there uh, long time back and uh, your shakti that anti satellite uh, is a offshoot of that similarly they have already started work on quantum uh, computing uh, which they are there they have already so this is as per the policy which is uh, going to come up there is it going to be utilizable in the near future a big question mark. Uh, is the um, uh, Indian uh, industry in, in academia and Indian uh, Ministry of Defense uh, um, venturing into research and uh, design and research and uh, in, of quantum uh, computing? Uh, yes, certainly. So that way it uh, makes a good uh, sense. And, 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 and we are quite well placed for this. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I think before we wind up, you know, my one last question to you would be that uh, where do we stand as vis-a-vis -vis our uh, adversaries on the borders, the not so friendly nations? And uh, is are we actually, if there is a war with, uh, you know, significance on a, the use of AI technology, then uh, where do we stand? Okay. Uh, like in my... Introduction also, I said that I'll try and break some uh, myths, right? Uh, when you look at a future war of the 21st century, uh, there are three myths. Uh, so I'll just read it out. I just, this, this, and these have actually been worked out by certain, uh, or a lot of research, and I'm reading out from a paper. This is the first myth. So basically it says that, you know, when you introduce high technology, you can downsize. So it's not correct. In Indian Army has used the correct word, right sizing. Whenever there were some people who were looking at data entry, data operators, data analysts, which were there doing it manually by running certain SQL uh, program. Now this is all being done automatically. So this manpower which has been saved is you are actually right sizing. So automation, high technology introduction doesn't mean uh, uh, that. And this is exactly what uh, they say that okay, we'll reduce boots on ground. I'll come to that. The second myth is modern technology will make all future wars bloodless. The second myth. This is what China is demonstrating by humanoids. And the third is we can achieve information superiority and inform, even dominance of over in, in, in information dominance in. Uh, future wars, right? When you look at these three myths, firstly, it is right sizing, which Indian armies get got, Indian armed forces got it correct. Uh, because, and I, like I also said, while the troops on ground may be having a, a, a handled AI enabled device which assists them, so it is just assisting them, right? I also brought out the dynamics of having a fully autonomous. Uh, mechanism on uh, uh, there. 
the 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 fluid warfare the you know the unpredictability the, the flexibility which is required the reaction which takes place in actual intense battle is different it can't be just as as yet matched by certain uh, fully autonomous uh, humanoid or, or being and this can happen only with when quantum computing makes an entry which we, we may discuss uh, later right so this is something which is so this more of what will, what is the help it will help you in carrying out surveillance yes surveillance important you are getting so much of data which is available and now you are getting an image it is not possible humanly to identify a tank movement changes and all that because there's so much uh, uh, trillions and trillions uh, bytes of data which is uh, available to compare but here is where you know your computer vision comes into place and it will identify recognition and all those things will come up so you'll say fine so it is assisting you certainly so there again the uh, indian army has made indian armed forces made a lot of um, a lot of uh, spent a lot of uh, resources uh, i mean utilized a lot deployed a lot of resources in this so that is one thing there now when you look at the, at the high altitude you are sending a, a small remotely piloted uh, uh, you know um, a, a, a track based uh, um, uh, um, vehicle right uh, ground uh, ground vehicle or aerial vehicle aerial is much easier simpler ground vehicle now just see how it has to traverse before this so as a result you may simplify that what does it do can you carry weapons there and start firing it how many will you deploy and how many weapons will be controlled by how many people like you know there is already a study in the us uh, they've carried out of the uh, rpa related stress each pilots there are so many drones being launched uh, into afghanistan all that that they have uh, rp related stress because after all whoever is controlling there's a human being right so that is something which has to be looked at a realistic there is much simpler to demonstrate it and uh, you know and your and their media reporting it as a demo and uh, technology demonstration there but practically on ground this is still a big question mark uh, then uh, you know the other one is uh, the dynamics which are there if i have to take a call on uh, on utilization of ai in uh, along the uh, high altitude and just see it is an high altitude uh, area uh, i would say that look i have an infrastructure wherein in the comfort environmental comfort of a of a barrack or something you can operate remotely operate certain of these uh, uh, you know the un uh, unmanned uh, ground vehicles or the uh, uh, uavs or the remotely piloted any remotely piloted uh, platforms and you gather do your mission of surveillance and whatever is there uh, attaching a weapon system to this as a weapon uh, weaponization of this is a very simple issue why because whenever you're looking at remotely uh, autonomous the first thing you have they only either it has to be mechanically or it has to be electrically or it has to be hydraulically all these things are actually uh, done so uh, simply even today they, there these are some uh, you know uh, college uh, going students who are doing these projects uh, there uh, as a science project so those are not uh, there it is more uh, lies in how are you going to move the the track uh, vehicle and how is it going to circumvent all the difficult terrain and survive there right so that's not a major issue so here i don't think uh, china can do that so my reading is china is developing those billets which are there for housing their uh, troops and uh, since there are certain border management agreements uh, remotely uh, keeping them under observation and patrolling not physical but uh, virtually or uh, through uh, the unmanned uh, vehicles so that is where so i don't think it's a major uh, threat to us yes one aspect is the reach of your cyber 
space. When I say cyberspace, I'm actually referring to the information infrastructure, which is capable to handle uh, these, uh, on, on, or which these um, uh, UAVs and USVs can be launched. So that is primarily the communication that data makes. So I don't think uh, there's a major of that. It's more of still major demonstration. And Indian Army, Indian Armed Forces have acquired quite a few uh, aerial uh, unmanned platforms to counter this. Um, you know, uh, before I finish, uh, there are certain uh, recommendations which I would uh, like to give for the uh, the higher defense uh, management and the Ministry of Defense to uh, consider. Uh, it is very encouraging to see uh, that MCTE, that is uh, Military Communication Telecom Engineering, uh, through financial support from uh, financial support and allocation from uh, the National Cyber Security uh, Coordination Committee, uh, made some has made substantial progress in in uh, AI and uh, quantum, and they've set up a lab uh, which was inaugurated by the chief. This actually should become a standard procedure and a permanent solution. The Ministry of Defense needs to allocate resources uh, to the such uh, technical institutes specific, specifically there and it should not be from that uh, you know that military the advancement of or development of military labs that uh, funds which is there which is very minuscule so that allocation should be not only for the uh, the uh, drdo but also for the uh, the uh, the uh, military technical institute. Why I say this is, actually, there cannot be a gap, the technology understanding gap between the end user who's going to exploit it and the developer. Like I said, all of them, the domain experts, the developers, the uh, data engineers, the data scientists, they all actually are out of one uh, full body. They have to be more cohesiveness there. Uh, with this, uh, the center of excellence, which has been set up for AI uh, in military uh, colleges and uh, like MCT, the DRD also needs to now consider, like DRD when I say care, to set up a facility of their own. Uh, they can decide the level and the degree of uh, resources they want to deploy, especially in the field of AI and quantum physics in these uh, labs. Uh, in these in these um, uh, labs which are uh, coming up, uh, and the third one is uh, there is a need to actually uh, reorganize and right size the PMOs, the development agencies, the production agencies, and the end users into one holistic uh, ecosystem. Like I said earlier, AI is not going to be just developer separate. The, uh, the, there will be a certain uh, scenario which will come up. He'll, uh, a user will throw uh, a, a, a request, look, I need this to be analyzed uh, through AI. Uh, today, what is happening is the, in the, in the industry takes up a project. Uh, for example, if I go to the industry, they say, fine, I want to close down this, this, this facility in my, uh, I'm talking about the uh, mobile industry cellular technology. I want to close down this, this facility in these towers and these areas. What will be the impact on the subscriber base? So he gets two to three months to develop and uh, do the modeling and tell him, uh, predict what will be the analysis. Such analysis is going to happen on the fly in, in the uh, battlefield. How it is to, what to be done is exactly what they have to now look at. Every organization which is going to manage the future technology based on AI and uh, quantum later if it's going to come up. So these are the three recommendations which I make, uh, which they need cons consider them to be a holistic um, approach to development and uh, right from the development, design development stage on the drawing boards to uh, till its um, uh, end of uh, technology cycle or the use of that equipment. Uh, that's all. Right, sir. I think, you know, this is wonderful. It was a really, really nice conversation where, you know, because 90% people do not know the technicalities. And they think, you know, if, it, if China can do it, so can we, if China is, well, we, they do not know that China only does a lot of perception management, which, uh, you know, most of the people do not understand and they get carried away. So it was wonderful to have you on the chat room and oh, we you. really enjoyed it. And we are going oh, to continue, sir, next time.
whenever uh, there's an opportunity we get and there's an occasion when we need, we are going to really ask you to carry it forward from where you oh, yes. left today. It'll be wonderful, sir. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. And now we are okay, taking uh, you yeah. back to the European studios. Uh, Chatali is uh, waiting for us uh, there. And uh, I'm sure she's back now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so thank much. You so much thank sir. You. Thank you very much, it's a sir. Pleasure. And uh, bye, bye, very bye. happy Army Day, sir. And Jai Hind to you, you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, Jai uh, Thank Chetan, you so Jai much, Hind. sir. Thank you so Thank much. You. It was very interesting to listen to all about uh, quantum and uh, artificial te uh, intelligence technologies in Indian Army. Thank you so much for your inputs. And we uh, really look forward to have another chat with you sometime later. Thanks for your time, Thank sir. You. And have a great day ahead. Thank Jai. you, Chatwin. Okay. Okay. okay.